False flag operations are covert operations designed to deceive the public in order to make an attack look like some outside force carried it out. This gives a nation the ability to start a war and make it look like they were the victims. This is very important if the public does not want war and it also limits the ability for opposing interests to stop the new war. Any opposition, foreign or domestic, would immediately be put in the same category as those that they claim did the false flag. You're either with us or you're with the enemy. False flags do not happen very often, but when they do, they change the paradigm we operate in. We all see how the world has been changed forever after 9-11. Before 9-11, we would not have put up with such a loss of privacy and a loss of liberty, much less a decade of war looking for weapons of mass destruction or men in caves. Those weapons of mass destruction got to be somewhere. Nope, no weapons over there. <laughs> Maybe under here. <laughs> With the supposed death of Osama bin Laden and the supposed end of military actions in Iraq, I feel the decks are cleared for the next big event. Historically, false flags are military in nature, but I feel going forward they will morph into something much worse. Every system built on debt needs constant debt to be created or the system implodes. If the criminal elite can expand the debt system through asset bubbles, then all is well. But what happens if they can't get more debt created? They need to either steal other assets to provide capital for the system, or they need a reason to create massive debts that the masses will sacrifice for. Wars do both. With war, the criminal elite can confiscate the natural resources of other nations and provide the context to create massive amount of new debt. Our paradigm is failing, and there is no fixing it, there is so much inequity built into the system at every level, the only answer is for a complete collapse. This collapse will leave a generational scar so large that humanity might never consider again fractional reserve banking or the war machine it enables. Until that collapse, the criminal elite will do what they have always done, create more debt and more wars. The criminal elite see their power paradigm collapsing on its own cancerous self. A silver default, debt ceiling doom, dollar collapse, peak oil or whatever leads ultimately to the end of the Anglo-American petrodollar financial paradigm. The Anglo-American elite might need to pull off three false flags in order to fail forward. This might include the typical military false flag, an economic false flag, and an informational false flag. These dramatic measures will seem necessary to the criminal elite and the horrific toll on humanity will be justified in their minds. This societal upheaval will be time for the criminal elite to settle all the threats to their power paradigm, much like the end of Godfather 1. The first of the three threats to their power is the death of the dollar. The dollar is the basis of all the criminal elite's power. Without it, or an equivalent of it, they have no means to create debt that enslaves nations, states, corporations, and citizens of the world. This debt money provides the criminal elite an unlimited checkbook to fund the world's most powerful military that controls the world's natural resources so that their corporations can harvest them. It also protects the shipping lanes that transports the rest of the world's trade. This debt money also buys political power for which the elite rig the game in their favor. And finally, the criminal elite use their money to own all the major media in order to distract the masses from the real problem in the world, the debt-based banking system, and the paradigm it finances. It is no secret that the dollar is going to die. It is a mathematical inevitability. Nothing can stop the ultimate collapse of the dollar. Our monetary system is based on debt, and in order for it to work, more debt needs to be created every year in excess of the debt and interest accrued the year before. If it does not happen, there will be a massive wave of defaults that would suck the system dry in a few weeks. The the elite don't necessarily care if the dollar lives or dies, they just want to control the world's currency. They would ultimately like to have a global international currency that would be far away from pesky national politicians. So if the dollar is doomed, how can the criminal elite fail forward? They can create a financial crisis so incredible that desperate people would beg the elite to make the pain stop. They did this in 1907 to set the stage for the Federal Reserve. They did this in 2008 when they held up America for $700 billion. They will do it again and use the line of stability as the main reason why we should accept their new corrupt plan. I don't think that they go pull off something this large without a much larger distraction to silence the masses. The only thing big enough to scare the masses under the protective hug of the elite is another world war. This war can put an end to another threat of the current world order, the anti-hegemon. Non-Anglo-American nations like China, Russia, Iran, Venezuela, among others, have been gaining an incredible amount of power. 
I call these group of non-Anglo-American powers the anti-hegemon as they have no uniting ideology, race, or religion other than standing in opposition to the hegemic power of the Anglo-American empire. The anti-hegemon nations have so much to gain from a retreat of the Anglo-American empire from the world stage. Countries like China, Russia, Iran, Venezuela, India, and many more to a lesser extent like Japan, Korea, Germany, and France have been on the losing end of the Anglo-American empire for over a century. These nations have a history of Anglo-American losses like the Cold War, Opium Wars, Operation Ajax, the CIA attempted coup of Chavez, British colonization of India, Apartheid, Hiroshima, the closing of the gold window by Nixon, and Waterloo. These are only some of the examples the Anglo-American elite have used in the past to ensure their supremacy. The Anglo-American elite have used every form of deceit to change or cheat the rules in pursuit of world domination. I believe the most likely event for a military false flag will be an American ship sunk in the Strait of Hormuz, supposedly by the Iranians. In order to understand this, it is imperative to understand the petrodollar. After Nixon took the dollar off the international gold standard, the Anglo-American elite devised a way to back the dollar with oil. Without going into too much detail, the plan was simply for their Arab partners to raise the price of oil dramatically and only sell their oil for dollars. They would then recycle all of those dollars back into the Anglo-American financial centers. So if you ever wondered why the Arab nations that called us the Great Satan gave us all their dollars, you now know why. The defense of this petrodollar standard has led us to invade Iraq when Saddam Hussein sold oil for euros and Gaddafi in Libya when he proposed that he and other nations sell their oil for the new gold dinar. This is also why so many sanctions have been put on to Iran. The Iranians opened up their oil bourse in 2008 to sell their oil for anything but the dollar. An attack on an American warship would be exactly what Dick Cheney plotted to do in 2008 before he left office. Here is an insider's account of that meeting from the famed journalist Seymour Hersh. That a few weeks later, a meeting took place in the vice president's office. Quote, the subject was how to create a casus belli between Tehran and Washington, he said. What you're writing there is that Cheney, there was a meeting in the White House where Cheney presided over looking to cook up the next war, a, a false war based on false intelligence. Among the items considered and rejected, which is why the New Yorker did not publish it on grounds that it wasn't accepted, one of the items was why not every, there was a, a dozen ideas proffered. How to, how to trigger a war. The one that interested me the most was, why don't we build, we in our shipyard, build four or five Iranian boats that look like Iranian PT boats, put Navy SEALs on them with a lot of arms, and the next time one of our boats goes through the Straits of Hormuz, start a shoot-up. Might cost some lives, and it was rejected because you can't have Americans killing Americans. But that, that's the kind of, that's the level of stuff we were talking about, provocation. I don't even think that it would necessarily be an American that pulls off this attack on the American ship. If you look at who's been pushing for a war with Iran the most, it is Israel and the neocons that got us into the last war. They proudly talk about how they get us to fight their wars. Here's a clip of Israeli President Benjamin Netanyahu talking about their secret weapon. But I'll tell you one thing, unlike America, uh, Israel seems to be able to fight wars very quickly. What is your secret? Because we don't seem to have the hang of that. The secret is that we have America. Nah. <laughs> and America, America, you see, the, the, the point is that I Israel... If you think that that was just a slip, please look into Project for a New American Century or the 1967 USS Liberty incident where unmarked Israeli planes attack and nearly sunk the most decorated ship in our fleet with the purpose of getting the United States to attack Egypt. Uh, I frankly think that crisis initiation is really tough. And it's very hard for me to see how the United States uh, president can get us to war with Iran. Um, which leads me to conclude that if, in fact, compromise is not coming, that the traditional way of Amer America gets to war is what would be best for U.S. interests. Uh, some people might think that Mr. Roosevelt wanted to get us into World War II, as David mentioned. You may recall we had to wait for Pearl Harbor. Some people might think Mr. Wilson wanted to get us into World War I. You may recall he had to wait for the Lusitania episode. Some people might think that Mr. Johnson wanted to send troops to Vietnam. You may recall he had to wait for the Gulf of Tonkin episode. Uh, we didn't go to war with Spain until the USS, uh, yes. until the Maine exploded. World's delightful in Cuba, stop. 
could send you prose poems about scenery, but don't feel right spending your money. Stop. There is no war in Cuba. Signed, Wheeler. Any answer? Yes, dear Wheeler, you provide the prose poems. I'll provide the war. That's <laughs> fine, Mr. King. Yes, I rather like... And may I point out that Mr. Lincoln did not feel he could call out the Federal Army until Fort Sumter was attacked which is why he ordered the commander at Fort Sumter to do exactly that thing which the South Carolinians had said would cause an attack. So if, in fact, the Iranians aren't going to compromise, it would be best if somebody else started the war. Uh, one can combine other means of pressure with sanctions. Uh, I mentioned that explosion uh, on August 17th. Uh, we could step up the pressure. I mean, look, people, Iranian submarines periodically go down. Someday one of them might not come up. Who would know why? We can do a variety of things if we wish to increase the pressure. Every, there was a, a dozen ideas proffered how to, how to trigger a war. The one that interested me the most was, why don't we build, we in our shipyard, build four or five Iranian boats that look like Iranian PT boats, put Navy SEALs on them with a lot of arms, and the next time one of our boats goes through the Straits of Hormuz, s start a shoot-up. But I'm just suggesting that uh, it, it, it's, this, this is not a, a either-or proposition of, you know, it's just sanctions has to, has to succeed or other things. We are in the game of using covert means against the Iranians. We, we could get nastier at that. A false flag attack like an American ship sunk in the Strait of Hormuz would also keep Iranian allies like Russia and China at bay, much like the 9-11 attacks kept them from using their power to stop the United States from invading Iraq. The world is a much different place than it was in 2000, and China and Russia have learned a lot as they have been vocal opponents of many of the pressures the Anglo-American Empire has applied to Iran. If China does rise in opposition, that would be something the Anglo-Americans could easily turn the American public onto them too. Our horrible economic conditions are directly responsible to those that own and control our paradigm, the criminal elite in Washington and Wall Street. That being said, the criminal elite will blame all of the problems on anything else in the world except for them. China could have purposely been made into a threat only to take them down in the future. Let me first state that I am no fan of China. Their elite have human rights violations against their own citizens that would make you sick to your stomach. But let's be honest, China would not be a threat if our criminal elite did not build them up in the first place. Our military industrial complex needs an enemy to justify their war machine. The war on terror was a good ride, but after almost a decade, it's getting a little old. Our banking system needed another country to buy our paper Ponzi scheme, and China became the most obvious target after Japan gorged itself on our debt. Our elites made deals with the Chinese elites to move our manuscripts manufacturing overseas to use their slave labor and pollute their environment. The Chinese communists got all the technology and manufacturing and dollars to build up China as a threat. Our elite did this to make tremendous profits and keep the dollar paradigm going. But in the end, I believe that our criminal elite may use China to be the next enemy in a paradigm shifting war. Since China has now said no more American debt, the Federal Reserve has stepped up as the buyer of last resort. This has bought us some time, but there's a huge economic difference of recycling dollars already in circulation, like the Chinese dollars, than freshly printed ones like that from the Federal Reserve. The Anglo-American elite must solve Triffin's dilemma, where a world currency reaches its apex and must be allowed to default, but somehow not drag down the rest of the world with it. The elite have been trying to get regional and ultimately global currencies in place to solve this dilemma. Now no nation is going to give up their power to create money, especially now that we're looking at the euro imploding. The only option I feel is to do it the old fashioned way, through war. The only thing the United States is really good at now is exporting debt and bombs. There is way too much at stake for our elite to just silently walk away into the night without a fight. They are trying to keep things going by now fighting four, five, six wars in the oil reach Middle East and North Africa region. But the writing is on the wall. The debt ceiling will continue to be raised and money and debt will be created and the war machine will continue to churn. This will not end because the elite will say we can't do this anymore. If anything, history has shown that when the chips are down on the table, they will double down and go off to war. The destruction of the dollar will either be the cause of war or war will be the destruction of the dollar. If there is an economic false flag, like a massive treasury sell-off, then it could be a cause of war with China. Or, if there is a military false flag, it will cause the dollar's destruction and force introduction of a new monetary paradigm, possibly a global currency. The elite will use this upheaval to destroy any competitors. In the smoking aftermath of the war, they will impose a new paradigm based off of the same destructive seeds of the old paradigm.
There is a third threat to the elite's power paradigm that can and should stop all of this. Freedom of information. There is no doubt the internet has gotten away from the criminal elite and that their lies have been exposed. Small sites all over the internet have shown over and over again that the emperor has no clothes. I can see an informational false flag to coincide with the economic and military false flag. They can falsely blame China or domestic groups like Anonymous for massive internet shutdowns. I believe that big corporations will still have a functioning internet, but small informational sites will be shut down for sake of quote unquote national security. Perhaps it could even be something much worse, where they shut down all free speech and opposition for the sake of national security. I believe ultimately a wide awake humanity will put an end to all these forms of treachery. We have the benefit of seeing the same playbook over and over again throughout history. And if they do try another false flag, it is imperative that we question the perceived reality and wake humanity up before we get marched off to another war. Our job is not necessarily to fight this evil. We only need to expose evil so it will cease to have power. The real challenge is to show people that the good that they think they are doing is really evil and they will no longer do it. We need to convince our fellow citizens that debt and war are evil, and we need to rid this scourge from humanity once and for all. The timing and order of all this is unknown, but just know that it's going to get dramatically worse before it gets any better. Every 80 years or so, a paradigm dies and a new one is born out of the ashes of the old. 80 years ago, we had the Great Depression and World War II, and this was the creation of our current paradigm. 80 years before that, we had the Civil War, and 80 years before that, we had the Revolutionary War. So far, the United States has survived and has gone on to become a global superpower. This time around we have the possibility of a revolutionary war, a civil war, or a world war, or a combination of all three. There is nothing in writing that says America will go on forever. In fact, given our horrible record on debt and war, this system deserves to die an awful death, so that humanity will never go back down this path again.